In the hit post 9-11 neo-noir art film Attack of the Clones, everything goes on one beat too long. The most fundamental building block of movie narrative is a beat. Uh, now, no one knows what a beat is, but it's fundamental. Depending on who you ask, a beat can be each section of plot, or each section of a scene, or each section of dialogue or action within a scene, or each individual piece of dialogue or action within a scene, or each micro pause between each individual piece of dialogue or action within a scene. Uh, now I like to use all definitions simultaneously so that no one can ever understand me. Now Attack of the Clones doesn't seem to have any concept of timing at all, that it is incredibly workmanlike. Scenes essentially play out in real time. There's often no attempt to manipulate the timing of the beats. Oh. And I couldn't get my head around it until I saw that they only watched the movie through when they were doing the final mix. This is normally what people get to see at the first rough cut screen. Yeah, I know. I can't <laughs> look at it. Obviously this causes pacing issues the whole way down, um, and I dealt with that on the largest scale in the last video. Now I want to hone in on those micro changes. Uh, so let's cover off one whole scene. There's about five scenes of Obi-Wan and Anakin together to establish their relationship. Um, and they spend those five scenes almost exclusively bickering, which makes this weird little beat incredibly <laughs> important. Then I'm doing a bit of a Jar Jar removal. Not because he's unfunny and annoying, Abby! though that's true, uh, but because it makes this section go on one beat too long. Now Anakin and Padme's first exchange in the movie is interesting. I can see how it would work on a script level, but as it turns out, uh, it sucks ass. Rather than it playing like an endearing, awkward moment, it plays like an embarrassing mistake of filmmaking. So an awkward moment is all about the building and release of tension. It's basically a comedic beat. I don't want to turn this into a funny hack laughing moment, but we can look at how you would structure a funny hack laugh moment and use that to reverse engineer this one to make it seem tolerable. So structurally, it should go set up, escalation, payoff. But this one goes set up, escalation, escalation, de-escalation, de-escalation. Which is a classic mistake to make when you're trying to do your first bit of scripted comedy, where the tension is built for a joke, but there isn't a payoff. You have a funny little idea, but there isn't a moment where the audience is given permission to laugh. Instead, it builds that tension and then goes, oh, uh, sorry, never mind. And here, that piece of backpedaling comes from Padme, uh, which is extra wrong because she's a subject of the awkward moment. So for her to diffuse it steps us backwards. It just makes it more uncomfortable and removes the opportunity for a payoff. Ideally, you want escalating dialogue between the two and then a third person comes in and joke. Uh, and that gives us a sudden release of tension and we can feel good about it even though the dialogue can still be as embarrassing as ever. In my first experiments with this moment, I realized that Obi-Wan's line Our presence here will be invisible, milady, I can assure you. is really the payoff that I'm looking for. Now, it's never going to be hilarious, but it's not supposed to be. But just with a bit of merging takes and retiming and rescoring this whole section and re-recording all the foley, we can get this exchange to kind of hit the right tone. My goodness, you've grown. So have you. <laughs> grown more beautiful, I mean. Our presence here will be invisible, milady. I can assure so you. So it's still embarrassing and awful, but now it feels like maybe it was supposed to be. What? Now we get into the embarrassing bickering. Uh, narrative tension is good. Character conflict is good, but what we're supposed to see is that Obi-Wan and Anakin are like brothers with some degree of conflict. Instead, what we see is them fighting in every scene, so we assume that their baseline relationship is antagonistic. So what I've generally tried to do is retool the dialogue so that these moments can still happen, they just serve a slightly different purpose. But here I've actually removed the entire exchange in favor of this one shot. Having the dialogue there just muddies the plot anyway. With this new uh, kind of bad shot that I've invented, the implication is that Anakin doesn't agree. He just doesn't have to interrupt the scene to cry about it. And all that also lets us flow more naturally into Anakin complaining to Jar Jar about how he just embarrassed himself. Because now it plays that he embarrasses himself, sulks on the couch, and then complains to Jar Jar about it. Which needs to happen because Obi-Wan comes over and says, She was pleased to see us. Which does two things for us. It shows Obi-Wan comforting Anakin, and it tells us that Padme 
was pleased to see us. Uh, we didn't see any visual evidence of that, so it's good to know. And we've made it. That's all five beats in that scene, and only four of them needed drastic overhauls. As we go into the action, it just doesn't quite have enough punch. Apparently George Lucas has some kind of obsession with cutaways. So every action we get a cutaway of every reaction of every face and every object and every scene, which makes the action very easy to follow, but is incredibly tedious. We don't actually need to see what happens to these bugs after Anakin kills them. So I can just drop a lot of those cutaways and here I'm moving that into the surround sound to give us simultaneous action and I'm trimming down this whole scene to get us into that action before I zone out. Action in movies isn't cut in real time. It's all about manipulating the timing of the beats to create the effect you want. So if I go to punch myself, <laughs> The modern convention is to cut on the hit or cut out the hit, which makes it feel fast and disorientating and loud. Now that might not be what you're going for and it probably shouldn't be deliberately trying to lose your audience isn't the best sign. So the other option is to telegraph your action. <laughs> and what you lose in literal speed, you make up for an impact to the audience because they can actually follow what's going on. Attack of the Clones doesn't really do either. Uh, because it's playing out in real time and just cutting whenever, Sometimes it feels too fast and sometimes it feels too slow. So I can't add to it, but whenever it embarrassingly grinds to a halt, I can trim. In the same way that there's too much cutting away from the action, there's also a problem with telegraphing your action too much. Having too long of a lead in lets the audience figure out exactly what's gonna happen before it does. Like this piece of Obi-Wan falling is fine, but it's not worth 30 seconds. Now, if we look at this whole speeder chase, each section of it seems to go on one beat too long. Anakin's meant to be overconfident because he's really good. And rather than showing us that, the movie just tells us that and then shows him uh, failing over and over, which doesn't do anything for the character and just makes it uninteresting or annoying to watch. So we can just drop those beats. I'm dropping the power coupling beat. I'm dropping the blaster beat. I'm dropping the dropping beat. And that's better. But I want to keep this thread of the Jedi losing their lightsabers. It's just a fun little piece of business that ties everything together. The problem is the setup is in one of the beats that I want to remove. So it's not the end of the world. I can just add back that blaster beat. It's just like 30 seconds of the movie. But instead what I've done is make it so that Anakin destroys the speeder with his lightsaber. I've just rearranged some shots and then made this explosion start in the wide. And then to keep the lightsaber thread, I've taken this shot, done a 2D track on it, placed a 3D lightsaber into his hand and then animated him losing it. And then finally to sell all that, I've recorded some effort noises, some foley and the lightsaber flying away. You'd think you'd just wave a stick past a microphone and that makes the sound of a lightsaber moving through the air. Uh, but no, it, it's far more embarrassing than that. All the action in this movie is punctuated by these awful comedic beats. I'm quite beside myself. But here's the thing, if you want to do an overly long action sequence, it needs to have peaks and valleys. And the easiest way to create an interesting valley is to do a joke. That's the classic tension release. So without reworking the action sequences completely, uh, which is kind of outside the scope of what I want to do, these moments kind of have to happen because they serve a crucial pacing function even if they are the worst. The other type of tension break are these arguments between Obi-Wan and Anakin which really just go on one beat too long. You drop the last beat from all of these it turns from a genuine argument into banter. Which you would rival Master Yoda as a swordsman. I thought I already did. Just like with action, when you're editing dialogue, you want to manipulate the timing of everything to try and create the illusion of a natural flow. You could have it play out in real time and just show the person who's speaking, but that's not particularly interesting. The real trick is J cuts and L cuts, where you cut the video at different times to the sound. Because if you're in a conversation in real life, you know, you hear someone speaking and then you look at them. It shouldn't be perfectly synced. Now, George Lucas Star Wars does use more hard cuts than your average movie. Um, I think it's part of the serial vibe um, in George Lucas's mind. I don't think Star Wars ever progressed past being a Flash Gordon ripoff, but I've gone through and in certain scenes that were lacking pace or tension, I've added these J cuts and L cuts. And here that lets us come out of that action sequence, go into this snappy little piece of dialogue and then transition into the club. 
and I've reworked this so that Obi-Wan is berating Anakin less, but I haven't had to remove it completely because now it flows so much better that it doesn't feel like Obi-Wan yelling at Anakin is the focus of the movie. It didn't have to grind to a halt for that to happen. The one other reason I'm removing dialogue that I haven't touched on is when it's too on the nose. Uh, George Lucas has a bit of a bad habit of making his characters say everything that they're thinking. I hit the ship, but they used a decoy. Um, so here, I want to remove this little embarrassing interrogation of Anakin. Tell us now! It just makes him seem annoying and detestable, and it doesn't really make sense. So instead of the on-the-nose dialogue, I've just retimed everything and added like a low rumble and some effort noises. It was a bounty hunter card. Now, what's going on there? Uh, is he using the force to choke her or influence her? Is it the sound of his threatening aura? I don't know, uh, but hopefully what happens is it sells you on that moment visually and tonally. The characters don't need to say exactly what they're thinking. So hopefully that gives you an idea of all the types of beats that I'm reworking or removing and kind of how I'm going about that. Obviously I didn't cover everything, um, but you know, f you feel free to imagine me repeating that process over and over for every beat in the movie. So the next video will be on the romance subplot. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get into a little more detail about like face replacement and morphing and uh, rescoring and some of the techniques that I've used to rework dialogue very extensively. Uh, and hopefully I'll be done with the edit. Uh, and that is it for this one. What is it, Dad? Boba, pack your things. We're leaving.